Hello everyone. I welcome you all for today's session on basic electronics, 21 ELN 14 or 24 for video syllabus, module one, electronic circuit, lectures two. I'm your friend, Madhavas, assistant professor, department of ENC, Gosia College of Engineering. In this, we have started with the topic called as power supply and we have covered and half wave rectifier in this. In today's session, we'll be covering about full wave rectifier. So half wave rectifier, as we have seen in the previous video, is an insufficient as the conduction takes place only in the positive half cycle only or any alternate half cycles. Now, if you observe, when we rectify it, we are getting only the half cycle, which is not sufficient. So in order to solve the problem created by the half wave rectifier, we go, we go for a full wave rectifier which means that during negative half cycle also it will conduct. As we can see, this is the waveform of the full wave rectifier. So this can be achieved with the help of two circuits. One is with the help of biphase type, another one is bridge rectifier type. First, let us see what is biphase rectifier. So here we can easily observe the biphase rectifier circuit as shown in this figure. We can see the input of transformer is 240 volts, which is given to a secondary transformer here, connected with the help of a center tab. And this is called as center tabbed transformer, where you can observe a load resistance is connected between the diode D1 and the center tab. And if you observe the point C is also connected to the load resistance along with the center tab there. So what happens here is that when the positive cycle or during positive half cycle, the diode D1 gets on, as you can observe here, and current starts flowing. So during positive half cycle, we can see the diode is diode one is on, whereas diode T is two is off. Similarly, during negative half cycle, what happens is that diode D1 is off and diode D2 is on, and the current flows in this particular fashion, as we can observe. Now, if you see that both the cycle the register rl is receiving in the same direction so we can see we are getting a proper dc voltage here okay so this is the simple full wave rectifier with the help of biphase rectifier so what happens here is that during one phase one diode is on in another diode is off so as we can see here during positive cycle d1 will be on and during negative half cycle as we can see here diode d2 is on so this is the simple waveform without the reservoir capacitor connected across the load. So we have not connected any capacitor across the load. That's the reason what we can see, this is the output waveform of a biphase rectifier. But once we connect a reservoir capacitor, so you can observe here the biphase rectifier circuit with the reservoir capacitor. It means a capacitor is connected across the load resistance RL. So what happens here is that the capacitor stores the charge during the diode is for, uh, passing the current. So what happens at any diode one or diode three is on, the current flow across this and the capacitor gets fastly charged. And in this way, the constant voltage is maintained across the load resistance RL. And we can see the discharge time is contrast. It depends upon the load resistance and the capacitance connected across here. And we can see uh, almost all of constant DC voltage produced across the output. So we call this one as a ripple here. So this is how we generate a constant DC voltage with the help of a biphase rectifier along with the capacitor as we can just see without capacitor, only these two waveforms with the help of capacitor, we can see the third waveform, the output of a capacitor, how it is visible, looks like a DC voltage. Okay, now same way, we can easily understand the full wave rectifier with the help of a bridge rectifier circuit. So your bridge rectifier circuit shows that the diodes, four diodes are connected in the form of a bridge as shown in this particular figure. Okay, so now during positive half cycle, what happens is that diode D1 gets on and diode D2 gets on. That's how the current starts flowing in the positive half cycle from the D1 diode through the resistance RL and then to the D2 and again back. So making it as a closed loop. So during positive half cycle, D1 and D2 are on, D3 and D4 are off as it becomes a reverse bias. Similarly, during negative half cycle, what happens is that 
diode D2 and D1 are off. Now D3 and D4 gets on. So what happens? The current starts flowing through the D3 and through the RL resistor and then goes to the D4 and again comes back. So this is how it forms the closed loop. So this is how the full wave bridge rectifier works. So in during a negative half cycle, diode D1 and D2 are off and diode D3 and D4 are on. So this acts like a full wave bridge rectifier. And this is the output of this particular full wave rectifier without capacitor there. Now, to make it smooth circuit, let us connect, connect the capacitor C1 across the load register, as we can observe here, which acts like a reservoir. As we already say, the capacitor is used for smoothening the output of the rectifier. So this is how. When hard, what happens here is that during positive cycle D1 and D2 are on, the capacitor gets charged. And when D3 and D4 are on, again, this capacitor gets charged. So it charges very fast and maintains the constant DC power supply across the load resistance RL. So we call this one as full wave bridge rectifier with a reservoir capacitor present here. So this is how we can design a rectifier output with the help of full wave bridge rectifier or a by phase rectifier. Now, let us see the important concept of voltage regulators. This is another one important topic. As we have seen in the power supply, the last topic is to maintain the voltage constant across the load register. As we already seen, the capacitor are used for smoothing it, but it will not maintain the constant DC supply there. So in order to maintain that, we have one important diode a special diode, we call it as Zener diode, because the Zener diode is a special diode. It operates in the reverse bias condition, and we can observe the characteristics of a Zener diode here. So uh, as we know, it is operating in forward bias, but in reverse bias, what happens is that after a certain voltage, it allows us the current to pass through it and it maintains the voltage constant. So that is the speciality of the Zener diode which allows the current to flow even in the reverse bias direction. Because as we have seen the diode, when it is forward bias, it passes the current. But this is a special diode called as Zener diode. And the voltage at which it breaks down or it passes the current through the diode, that particular breakdown voltage is called as Zener breakdown voltage, or we call it as Zener voltage. As we can observe, that is the reason the Zener diode is connected reverse across the load register. And always it maintains a constant voltage of V out. As we can see, V out is equal to Vz. Vz is the voltage across the Zener diode. So whatever input we are giving it here, if we connect a Zener diode across the load resistance, it maintains the constant output voltage. That's the reason we use a, uh, this Zener diode as a voltage regulator. So this is the important concept of voltage regulator. Why the Zener diode is used as voltage regulator? The reason is that we came to know that in the reverse bias, we can see in the reverse bias at certain voltage, it allows the current to pass. So this voltage at which in the Zener diode works in the reverse bias is called as Zener breakdown voltage region, or we call this voltage as Zener voltage. Okay, that's the reason we use Zener diode across the load resistance for maintaining a constant DC voltage. Next, what we have is about voltage output resistor resistance and a voltage regulation. So the internal resistance appear across the output of the supply is defined as the change in the output voltage to the change in the output current. And this is a formula what we can have it. Okay, R0 is equal to change in output voltage divided by the change in the input voltage, that's the current output current. So where dV out represents small change in the output voltage, dIL represents the corresponding small change in the output current. So this is the definition of the output resistance. What we have, as we know, resistance formula from the Ohm's law, voltage divided by current, same thing has been defined. Similarly, voltage regulation. The regulation of power supply is given by the relationship. What we have is change in output voltage divided by change in the input voltage. When we take the ratio of that and then multiply, we get the relation in terms of percentage. So we call that one as <clears throat> there is regulation of the voltage power supply there. Okay. So this is what is the important concept present in the power supply design.
if you have any questions go to the comment section write down your questions i will reply to your question if you like my video subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon for further notification or share with your friends for their benefits thank you